It's Mental Wealth with Dr. T.K. Harris. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In this final episode of Understanding the Muslim Mind, we will look at the duties and functions of a strong heart or consciousness. First of all, the heart is very good at listening to the rest of your mind. Your awareness receives information from the nafs and the intellect. Your awareness or your heart is actually quicker to act than either. With a strong heart, we can behave in a way that is sensible and automatic, avoiding the temptations and emotion of the nafs and directing the intellect towards good actions. Secondly, the heart is good at inspecting what's going on in your mind. It's like an inner eye with which you can look into yourself. You can use your awareness to take note of what your thoughts or feelings are at any point. The technical word for this is metacognition, which really means thinking about thinking. Most of us do thinking automatically. How many of us step out of that and say, okay, why did this thought happen? And do I have to react to it? Should I be automatically responding to my emotions? Or can I step aside from them? So adopting this neutral, non-judgmental self-observation is a very important tool for understanding how you are and for getting insight into what makes you tick. The more you do it, the better you will know yourself. We'll talk more about this in the next series, which is more about intervention. Thirdly, the heart has a judging function, weighing up the wisest way forward. In matters where things are not clear, it is your heart, your consciousness, which has rules and laws which help us to make choices without having to re-examine them every time. This way, we save ourselves from looking to the nafs or to the intellect when we face some familiar or difficult issues and choices. In essence, this is called akhlaq, or conduct. How do you conduct yourself, and what kind of rules do you have for how you go about your business, and how you deal with things that happen? These things, if they're stored in your heart in a good way, will make your life a lot easier to live. And we will be looking at that in our next series. If you like, the heart becomes a kind of automatic pilot. Once you've figured out a way of doing something, it's much easier to just live by your heart, because it's a peaceful way of living and stops you from having to rethink everything all the time. The more you train your heart in good routines, the better those good routines get settled in and become part of your personality. Fourth, the heart is the source of wisdom and purpose to life. What are wisdom and purpose, and are they important? Well, actually, they are the whole point of mental wealth. It's our reason for being. The heart is the seat of our faith. It's the place where we can define and refine our character. It is within your heart that you can find meaning and value in your own existence. Your heart is the keeper and the definer of your purpose and meaning in life. Alhamdulillah, God has given you the freedom to choose what you want to believe in and to choose your purposes in life. As a Muslim, you have religious and material purposes and duties. We are here to do what Allah has asked us and beyond this, we are to choose our other purposes and goals wisely. There are both religious things and a whole host of material purposes and different roles that we have in life towards the people who matter. If you forwarded this link to all of your contacts, it would cost you nothing, but imagine the blessing you would get if even one person who you had sent the link to found some kind of salvation, some kind of relief, some kind of solace from clarifying their mental health. Let us become ambassadors for a religion that introduced so much of what is modern civilization to itself. Let's consider things which make your heart stronger. If your neighbor's grass looks greener, 
Maybe his grass is greener because he's fertilizing his land more. What is it that makes a person's heart stronger? And more importantly, what strengthens the heart? What makes you a person who's more in command of yourself and of the world around you, without needing to be bossy or forceful? Well, there are several things that we can look at. Firstly, having clear rules of conduct. We will look at this in the next series as our first priority. Secondly, learning patience. Managing the dilemmas and fights between the nafs and the intellect in a graceful way. Thirdly, concentrate your attention on what is important and let the rest be. Fourthly, reaching out to others and being of service and help to them. We are fundamentally a hyper-social species and we thrive both as individuals and as a community when we give of ourselves to each other. Finally, remembering Allah and getting a perspective on your problems. Reflecting on life, in case we get ideas that we are too important. We are important to ourselves, but that does not mean we should take ourselves too seriously or expect that the world will collapse when something goes wrong in our life. Thank you so much for listening. Now that you have understood the basic structure of the Muslim mind, our next series will look at interventions. This time we'll step things up and we'll start making changes for people who need to make those changes. See you in the next series. Wassalam.